Hi everyone, uh, welcome to this video. This is my second video. Uh, in my first video, we discussed uh, how to create a topology, uh, all the topology process from A to Z. Uh, in this video, we're going to discuss how to create a geodatabase uh, and uh, what can a geodatabase hold inside of it. Uh, this is basically it. Okay, I'm going to start uh, straight away. Uh, so here I have my uh, folder, the folder that I, that I created for, uh, uh, for this tutorial. Uh, first of all, uh, I have the catalog pane, okay, it's here. Uh, how can I uh, open this catalog pane uh, or access it? Uh, so I go to the view tab, okay, and I click on catalog pane, okay. Okay, so I'm going to start. Uh, I write now. I'm going to create a geodatabase. So I right-click on this folder and go to New File Geodatabase, and uh, I choose File Geodatabase. Uh, the File Geodatabase would have, File Geodatabase would have the extension .gdb. Okay, it has been created. I'm going to name it something meaningful. Okay, geodatabase underscore example. Okay, now, now I have a file geodatabase. Uh, after that, I'm going to create a feature data set inside this geodatabase. So uh, why why should I create a feature data set? Uh, first of all, this feature say that data set would hold inside of it feature classes. So it would hold them all, there, there would be, most probably be uh, multiple feature classes. So it would hold them all together uh, and archive, archive them in this uh, feature data set. Uh, a second a second reason for creating this data set is that when we want to create topology after digitizing, uh, the, the topology won't be created unless we have a feature data set. So this is what I discussed in my first video. Okay, so now I'm going to create a feature data set. Uh, I right click on the geo database and go to new and choose feature, uh, feature data set. Okay, this is the output, uh, the location where the data set will be created. It's inside the geo database. Okay, and here I assign a name for this data set. Okay. And then I choose the coordinate system. I'm going to choose uh, WGS 1984, the university coordinate system. And then I click on run. It should take some, some time to execute. Okay, so as you see in the catalog pane, now we have a feature data set created inside this geodatabase. Uh, now I'm going to create a feature class inside this data set. So I right click on the data set, I go to new, and I click on feature class. Okay, I'm going to assign a name, meaningful name for this uh, feature class. I'm going to call it roles. Uh, it should have the, the feature type line, okay? The geographic type line, uh, since uh, roads are basically lines. If, we, if this feature class was a building feature class, we would choose uh, polygon, uh, we choose the polygon type, okay? So, but for this, uh, in this case, we choose line. Then I click next. Okay. Here I'm going to create a, 
a field for this feature class. Okay, every feature class has fields. Uh, I'm going to name this field supply. And I choose the data type for this field. It should be either short integer or long integer. In the case, if the feature class uh, has subtypes or the feature class would have subtypes in the, after we create it, we should choose either uh, the short integer or the uh, long integer. So it should be an integer to have subtypes, okay? If it doesn't have subtypes, we can choose any other data type. So I chose a short integer. I click on next. Click on next, next, and next again. Okay, so I can click, we write, we're good to go. I can click on finish. It's creating the feature class. It should take a while. So as you can see now, the feature class roads has been created inside this uh, feature data set. Okay, uh, so we have a geodatabase. Then we have we've created a feature data set inside this database, and we created a feature class inside the data set. Usually there there are multiple feature classes inside this same feature. So for example, uh, this uh, feature, uh, this data set would have a roads feature class, a buildings feature class, uh, and many other feature classes, okay? So now I'm going to create uh, a subtype for this uh, feature class. So what are subtypes? Subtypes, uh, every feature class is uh, divided into multiple subtypes. Uh, these subtypes are detailed description uh, of the feature class. For example, uh, a road feature class would be divided into multiple subtypes, uh, which are uh, major roads, secondary roads, routes, uh, residential uh, roads, uh, paved roads, unpaved roads. So uh, the, the subtypes are the detailed description for the uh, feature class, okay? So now I'm going to create the subtype. Uh, I right click on uh, the roads feature class. I go to design and click on subtypes. Okay, so now I go and click on create and uh, slash manage. Okay. So here I choose the field that I've created uh, a while ago when I was creating the feature class. I create, if you remember, I created a field called subtypes. So I choose it here. Uh, the subtypes that I'm going to, uh, going to write now are, uh, they are linked to this field, okay? Uh, okay, I'm going to start with uh, major roads. And the roads. Uh, routes. Unpaved roads. Paved roads. Okay, those are uh, simple examples. And, uh, and we have to uh, assign uh, a code for every uh, subtype.
So as you can see, we have six subtypes that I've created. Okay. Uh, now I can click on, okay. Okay, the subtypes has been created, have been created. Now I'm going to add this feature class, the table of contents. Now we have, as you can see here, now we have a feature class that has multiple subtypes or divided into multiple subtypes. Okay. Uh, I'm going to give you a very brief example of how we can use this, uh, uh, this feature class. So now I can click, for example, this, I'm going to digitize this road. Uh, it's an uh, unpaved road. I choose unpaved road. Then I choose the uh, type I want to uh, draw or digitize with. Choose mine. Okay, so I digitized this uh, this road, this unpaved road. Uh, now I'm going to uh, open the attribute table of this feature class. So I right click on the feature class and choose attribute table. So as you can see, this attribute table is similar to uh, an Excel table, okay? Uh, so it, usually a, a database holds data, okay? Holds and, and archived, uh, archives data inside of it. Uh, this is called a geodatabase. Uh, the reason why it's called a geodatabase is because it's, uh, it's, uh, it's specialized in holding the geographic data and it can display uh, this data in two forms, uh, in a visual form, okay, uh, through a visual approach and through a, a numeric form. Okay, so uh, inside the attribute table, we would have, uh, I have this unpaved road here inside the stored inside this attribute table uh, as a numeric uh, type. Uh, and as well, I have it here, displayed on the map, uh, we can visualize this uh, uh, road here. So uh, this is th this is uh, this is why a geodatabase is important. It, it stores data, geographic data, and it can display uh, these data in two forms, in a visual form as well as a numeric form. Uh, and this is uh, this is basically it. Uh, I hope uh, I hope this video will be beneficial for anyone who would watch it. Uh, I hope uh, that I've explained uh, a geodatabase uh, and the components of a geodatabase uh, well, and I hope uh, that it would be uh, that it's clear for uh, everyone. Uh, thank you for watching, uh, and uh, feel free to watch my upcoming videos as well.